It begins and ends with energy. As populations have grown, as society has progressed, the demand for energy production on Earth has soared, and the severe consequences that have come with it are well known. The fossil fuels that have sustained us are polluting catastrophically. They're also dwindling rapidly. We're in crisis, both energy and climate. But there's hope. If we can solve one, maybe we can solve both. That is old tech. That is new tech. Our sun, that star, at the very center of it, fusion reactions are taking place. And if we can replicate that on Earth, then that is our get out of jail free card. That is sustainable, clean, green energy for so long as there is humanity on this planet. We are currently in the central control room of Chat. What you see here is an actual fusion experiment. The physicist in charge and the engineer in charge in the middle and a number of other scientists who work on the project. We are collecting around the central monitors which are connected to a number of cameras where you can actually have a glimpse into the machine and see the actual plasma forming. We are basically creating a little star right now. Okay, we just started. You see the plasma has formed. Uh, we have it on the uh, upper half of the machine. Very soon we are going to connect it down. There you go. So this is how a usual plasma pass looks. We sometimes put a bit power or we do different experiments. And there you go. It's good. Fusion reactions are taking place every 20 minutes at the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. Heating hydrogen isotopes to a temperature of 100 million degrees Celsius, plasma is formed. As these isotopes fuse, helium is the product, releasing 10 million times more energy than in combustion or chemical reactions. We are trying to solve the energy crisis for the humanity. Fusion is very exciting because it's really what powers the sun, it's the same process that we do on Earth. RF go. Thank you. I'm going to trigger the pulse when available. Yep. There's absolutely nothing like being in a control room during uh, an experiment. It's very much about communications, knowing when something is ready, when something's not. There's always this buzz. Each plasma pass is testing a given concept. Either we are trying to understand the physics or we are testing engineering concepts. Can you trigger the pulse, please, for state on? Please? There's various challenges. Obviously, this is a very complex device. It was supposed to only last till like the 90s. Um, we're looking to extend it now past 2020. So it's making sure that we get the best science uh, in the safest way to keep that longevity. Start the countdown, please. This is similar to a, a, an Apollo mission or a, similar to a Manhattan project. Fusion is, is an amazing energy source because it needs a very, very little fuel, but it provides a huge amount of energy, which is carbon free and green and sustainable for many, many centuries to come. But on Earth, one of the challenges to harness this reaction is being able to stabilize plasma under electromagnetic confinement. Traditionally, this is done in a donut-shaped vacuum vessel called a tokamak, of which one of the most powerful is the joint European Taurus, JET. This is JET. You can, you can get the kind of scale. So this holds 90 cubic meters of plasma. It's great to see the inside of the machine. Sorry, I don't get very many opportunities to come here. So when we're up and running, we can be 10 times hotter than the sun. It's the hottest place in the solar system. The sun, um, as a fusion reactor, is actually very poor. For every cubic meter of the sun, it only creates one watt. And if you think about your light bulbs are being 60 watts, for a cubic meter, it's, it's actually very poor. So what we need to do is change some of the parameters 
to try and get more power out per cubic meter of volume. And we do that by taking it to really high temperatures. With uh, Jet being a machine designed in the late 70s, we are using modernity to try and deal with some of the problems we have from previous manufacturing uh, processes. Here we are looking at really what will happen on a fusion power plant. A fusion power plant will entirely change the world. I've been in fusion research for 20 years. Um, I felt that we might never get to it. Times are changing. It's starting to feel a bit like the space race. With the interest both in the private sector, the governments around the world are now interested. We're going to the delivery era. The race is on. Scientists around the world have been studying fusion energy for almost a century. And if there is a holy grail, it's not about replicating the reaction, it's about getting more energy out than we put in. In France, there is a multi-billion euro, 35 nation, 35 year reactor that's gonna do just that. It's the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER. In my view, nothing exists like this in the world. What we're trying to do is build a bigger jet. The size of it is about three times larger. We're going to be 10 times more powerful. The larger the machine, the longer you can hold the power in. The longer you can hold the power in, the more output you get. So size equals performance for us. Right next door to me, we're building a cryogenic system that makes liquid helium. That will be the largest plant in the world. We're creating some of the largest superconducting magnets. My heating system will be the largest microwave heating system. And since we've never done this before, we have to learn as we go. And that in itself is a challenge because you have all the different countries learning together on how to build this machine. We have 35 different countries working together as one single team. It's a big challenge as you could imagine. China, Russia, India, Japan, Korea, uh, Europe, US, they have not so many experience to work together to develop a joint project. It's a Russian idea. But then during the height of the Cold War, the Russians came in and said, hey, we're getting great results. Come see our tokamak. And the world came and said, wow, this is fantastic. This is much better than we've ever had before. There's no secrets in fusion. It's the opposite. It's not always peaceful. We will have heated arguments. We don't fight nationalism. We fight more trying to understand science. Fusion, hydrogen fusion, is, from my point of view, the only real option we have in the future to have a clean substitute, safe substitute to the fossil fuel burning. Many people would like it would come much earlier. Schedule is 2025 first plasma, 2035 full fusion power. It will take maybe five to 10 years to explore all the parameters before we could pass all this information to a utilities to build what we call a demo facility, which will be connected to the grid and produce power. From my point of view, we could not do better. Yeah, I, sorry, this is the coolest place because this is at the, actually the base. So the tokamak is gonna to be up here. And you can see the structure. Each one of these are openings to the tokamak. They serve different functions. In six years from now, this is gonna have our first plasma. It'll be just right above us, I mean, right, right up there. And in 16 years from now, right there is gonna be a miniature sun kicking out 100,000 times more energy, and that's 10 times hotter than what is actually the sun. And right here, this is the center. So right here is the axis of the machine and all around me above will be the plasma and the tokamak. 10, 12 billion of euro is the amount which has been involved so far. We are 60% of the overall spending around 20 billion. In Europe, we import nearly 1 billion euro per day of fossil fuel from outside the Europe. But I am pretty sure that if we succeed the hydrogen fusion industrial and economic sectors will be as large as it is now for the fossil fuel. It, it pisses me off that humanity 
can be so intelligent. I mean, you, you take the telephone and the technology there that is required to do this, let alone what we're doing here. And yet we're incapable of realizing that the earth is a finite size. And you know, we talk about equal rights. We don't give a damn about the equal rights of the future generations because we're just polluting the earth and damaging them to something. Humanity just has no concept of beyond one or two generations. And that, how can we be so intelligent yet so stupid? Future generations are gonna hopefully look back on one of these generations and saying, finally someone thought for the future. You can't just sit and you know, read books and do theory. You have to build a device and you have to find out what goes wrong with it and bin it and build another one. That's prototyping like any other kind of technology. So this facility is really exciting for me. There's a lot of people theorizing this kind of technology, but very few people actually building prototypes. And it's a real privilege to have access to all this technology and to be making meaningful steps every day. It used to be that the only way to get involved in fusion was to either have a government fund you or to find an excitable billionaire to fund you. But what we're seeing now is more and more conventional money go into fusion and recognizing it as a regular um, industrial sector. Pulsar Fusion is all about bringing fusion to space exploration. We want to develop rocket engines and eventually end up with something in orbit. We, we want to move as quickly as possible towards space testing. A lot of fusion projects don't build in the possibility of failure when they start out. Uh, whereas we've assumed that a lot of what we're gonna build won't work the first time you build it. Our entire lab, our entire workflow is set up to accommodate that efficiently. We can wake up in the morning and say, I have an idea, I wanna try it. And we will be prototyping that day. Like we'll turn it on, we will find problems, we will lift it up, we will change the parts, we can cook a magnet, the robots can change them, put a, a new, fresh magnet in, the, the device will be back online in 10 minutes rather than six months. We will do a lot of testing here and we will beat this machinery behind me to hell. And then we will build another device. Before the end of 2019, I want to see our first plasma in this vessel. We're not building a complete finished product necessarily. It's here as a test bed for developing a range of technologies that apply across the fusion sector. I think that there's enough translation to see fusion-powered rockets as a first step on the way to fusion power. There is no scenario where the technology that we're building here will not be applicable to power stations. By, by building the rocket, we can experiment and use and, and build more prototypes with all the technologies that are the same as building a fusion engine for, for power. Now we're at a stage where we have to start keeping up with nature and we actually have to start producing energy on a scale that the sun can. It is the element cooker. It is the life creator. It is not just a technology. It is the technology. Humanity has always been looking for energy. Energy is life. We need about a bottle of water and a battery from your uh, mobile phone and you can provide energy for you for the rest of your life. To me, this is T equals zero. This is the beginning of, to a large extent, the dawning of the fusion age. The sun is nature's chosen energy source. It always has been. We've always followed the stars for direction, but we need to emulate them. This is not some perpetual R&D project. Fusion energy is happening, and it's happening now.